Welcome to the Princeton University Online Machine Shop Safety Orientation. This orientation is required before you take any hands-on training in a campus machine shop. This presentation is not a substitute for the hands-on training that will be provided in the shop for each specific piece of equipment. After you have finished this orientation, you will be asked to complete a short quiz. Upon completion of the quiz, you will be able to provide your shop supervisor with confirmation that you have completed the online portion of the course and are now eligible to take the hands-on training in the shop in which you will be working. The university has adopted a policy which outlines the requirements for undergraduate students working in academic machine shops. This policy outlines the roles and responsibilities of shop supervisors and students, the expectation that students will apply safe work practices, and the training requirements for any student working in university machine shops. In addition to this training prerequisite, the policy outlines the requirement for undergraduate students to complete Princeton-specific training in the machine shop in which they will be working. For example, training in the physics student shop does not allow a student to work in the School of Engineering. Shop supervisors are responsible for approving access to the shop and ensuring that students are conducting work that is commensurate with their skill and training. Undergraduate students are prohibited from operating machines or performing any other activities in a university machine shop unless supervised by a shop supervisor or designated monitor. Working alone by undergraduates is strictly prohibited and is highly discouraged for graduate students, faculty, and staff. Although each shop has specific operating hours, all shops are closed and work may not occur between the hours of 2 a.m. and 8 a.m. Shop supervisors and designated monitors may prohibit shop access or machinery use by any individual or group for non-compliance with shop safety rules. Serious violations will be referred to the sponsoring faculty member and academic department manager or the dean of undergraduate students as appropriate. Shop supervisors have been designated for each university machine shop in which undergraduates may work. Contact your shop supervisor to schedule hands-on training or if you have any questions. If an emergency should arise while you are working in a shop, the University's Department of Public Safety is your first point of contact. They are the University's first responders for fire, medical, and other emergencies. They are trained to administer first aid and CPR and can quickly summon outside help when needed. To report an emergency, dial 911 from any campus phone or 609-258-3333 from any cell phone. Stay on the line and be prepared to answer all questions asked by the communications officer. Non-emergency inquiries can be directed to Public Safety's main number, 258-1000. Do not call 911 during an emergency to try to obtain information. This number is for reporting emergencies only and must be kept available for that purpose. In addition to a telephone, there may be other types of emergency equipment located in the shop. You should note the presence and location of these devices and know how to activate them. Emergency stop buttons may be located on a particular piece of equipment or on a wall in a common area. Buttons on machines will disconnect power to that piece of equipment. Buttons on walls or near doorways will disconnect power to all the equipment in that area. These buttons should be kept clear and free from obstruction for easy access in case of emergency. Emergency eyewashes are located in areas where corrosive chemicals may be used. Eyewashes are designed to provide continuous hands-free flushing of both eyes. If you receive a chemical splash in the eyes, activate the eyewash and rinse for at least 15 minutes, forcibly holding your eyes open. Seek medical attention for all eye injuries, regardless of their severity. Safety showers are usually located in areas of heavy chemical use. These may or may not be located inside the shop. If you get a chemical on your skin or clothing, flush with water for at least 15 minutes, removing clothing or jewelry while rinsing. Be careful when removing pullover shirts or sweaters to avoid contaminating your eyes. Fire alarm pull stations should be activated if you discover a fire. Activating the pull station will set off the building alarm and notify public safety. 
Evacuate the building immediately, closing doors behind you. Portable fire extinguishers should only be used for small, incipient stage fires and only if you have been trained on how to use one. Training is offered by the University Fire Marshal. The rotating equipment in machine shops present unique hazards that require strict adherence to clothing standards and requirements for personal protective equipment. Loose hair and clothing can be caught in equipment and pull an operator into the point of operation or cause asphyxiation. Clothing items such as ties, scarves, loose sleeves or flowing skirts are prohibited. Long hair must be contained and pulled back tightly. Long beards must also be contained. Jewelry such as rings, necklaces, bracelets and watches should be removed. Standards for Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE, have been established based on the hazards of machine shop work. Eye protection, in the form of safety glasses or goggles, is required when equipment is in use. Closed-toed shoes are required for work in machine shops. Individuals in flip-flops or sandals will be turned away. For certain pieces of equipment, such as grinders, additional face protection in the form of a face shield should be used. However, face shields do not take the place of eye protection. Because of the potential of flying metal shavings and sharp edges, long pants are strongly encouraged. Work gloves may be worn to handle stock, but should not be worn when actually machining because of the potential to pull an operator's hand into the point of operation. A variety of hearing protection is available in each shop, Ear muffs or ear plugs should be used when exposed to loud equipment. Be sure you know the proper way to wear hearing protection. Ask your shop supervisor if you have any questions. If you are generating large quantities of dust, you may wish to wear a dust mask for comfort. Dust masks are not a substitute for proper respiratory protection. If you believe you need respiratory protection, contact EHS at 258-5294. Housekeeping in machine shops means more than just keeping an area neat and clean. Poor housekeeping can present serious safety hazards. Equipment should be cleaned before and after each use to ensure a stable and clean work or cutting surface. Never use your hand to wipe off a surface. Always use a brush or a rag. Compressed air is used in most shops to power certain tools and equipment. Compressed air may be used to clean equipment and work surfaces, but only if the end nozzle pressure is less than 30 PSI and the user is wearing safety glasses. Compressed air may not be used for cleaning off yourself or your clothing under any circumstances as this can cause serious injury. Keep aisles and exits clear and make sure access to emergency equipment such as emergency stop buttons is unobstructed. Shavings or sawdust on the floor create a hazard which could result in a slip and fall. Sweep up frequently to avoid accumulation and to prevent injuries. Machine guards and shields are used to prevent accidental contact with the blade or bit. These must be kept in place during machine operation. Unauthorized removal of guards may cause you to lose your access privileges to the shop. Equipment malfunctions can lead to serious injuries. Immediately report any damaged or malfunctioning equipment to shop supervisors or monitors. The equipment must be taken out of service until it can be repaired, no matter how inconvenient. Dull or worn blades, bits, and cutters can lead to injury and poor performance. Report these to the shop supervisor or monitor. Only trained and designated shop personnel may perform equipment maintenance, such as changing blades or belts. If you are unsure about a level of maintenance, check with your shop supervisor. Accidents happen when machine operators get distracted. Do not converse with anyone while you are operating a machine, and keep music to background levels. Even if you are not operating a machine, you can be a distraction to someone else. Avoid surprising an operator or bumping into them while they are working. Wait until the machine is turned off and has stopped moving before addressing an operator. The use of personal electronics is highly discouraged because it prevents operators from remaining aware of their surroundings. Headphones and earbuds do not take the place of hearing protection. 
In addition, headphone cords can get tangled or caught in equipment. The best step you can take for success is to organize and plan your work ahead of time. Talk to your shop supervisor or project advisor as early as possible and check in frequently throughout the project. If you can manage your project effectively, you are more likely to avoid accidents and finish on time. If your project is not planned and managed appropriately, you may end up rushing to finish. Rushing is one of the leading causes of accidents. Even if you believe you are running behind, it will not help to rush through tasks and make mistakes. Work at an appropriate pace. Fatigue is another cause of accidents. Avoid working when you are tired. Taking even small breaks will help to ensure that you remain focused and attentive on your work. Sometimes a project requires the same cut or process over and over again. Repetition has the potential to lead to boredom or distraction. Balance efficiency with variety to avoid the hazards of repetition. Consider adding supplemental task lighting when necessary to ensure that you have good visibility over your work. Poor visibility can result in a machine operator leaning closer to the point of operation and increases the potential for injury. We hope you have found this introduction to machine shop work useful. Again, this orientation does not take the place of the more extensive, hands-on training which will be required before you can work in each shop. In order to complete this program, you must complete the quiz on the following page. Make sure you've received a confirmation email after you complete and submit the quiz to ensure the training has been recorded. If you have any questions, please contact your departmental machine shop supervisor or Kelly States at Environmental Health and Safety. We hope you have found...